Phosphate. Now let's go over phosphate, which is a major anion of the intracellular fluid. A normal range of phosphate is about 2.5 to 4.5 milligrams per deciliter. Phosphate is necessary for the formation of bones and teeth. It is also a major component in the adenosine triphosphate or ATP, which helps items move in and out of the cell. It helps in nutrient metabolism, acid-base buffering, and balancing calcium. It has an inverse reciprocal relationship with calcium. Now let's look at imbalances. Hypophosphatemia. This means low levels of phosphate in the blood. Causes. Hypophosphatemia can be caused by malnutrition, malabsorption syndrome, alcohol abuse, severe burns, diabetic ketoacidosis, and too many antacids. Clinical manifestations. Signs and symptoms of hypophosphatemia can include depression, confusion, muscle weakness, dysrhythmias, weakened bones resulting to bone pain and fractures, nursing management. Nurses can administer oral supplements as ordered. They can also decrease the calcium intake because they have an inverse relationship. Stop antacids and calcium supplements, and if severe and phosphate cannot be taken by mouth, phosphate may be given intravenously as ordered. Hyperphosphatemia. Hyperphosphatemia is when the phosphate level is elevated above 4.5 milligrams per deciliter. Causes. Causes can include renal failure, hypoparathyroidism, severe body-wide infection, large amounts of phosphate taken by mouth, clinical manifestation. Calcium deposits in the joints, skin, kidneys, and eyes may be seen. Hypocalcemia, neuromuscular irritability, Itching and hardening of the arteries may also be seen. Nursing management. Nurses can encourage the clients to reduce the consumption of phosphate-rich foods, such as milk, egg yolks, chocolate, and soft drinks. Nurses can also administer medication that binds with phosphate, making it harder to absorb and promote excretion. Drugs such as Renagel, Renvella, and lanthium can are used. Now, let's go over some NCLEX style questions so that you can gain further understanding. Question number one. You are doing a medication reconciliation and intake history for your new patient being admitted with stomach pain. You discover that he has a history of peptic ulcers and a low phosphate level. Which statement from your patient would concern you below? A, I drink a lot of milk with meals. B. I try to eat throughout the day because my stomach hurts when it's empty. C. I take an antacid a bunch of times all day long. The acid in my stomach just kills me. Or D. I try my best to eat the high phosphate diet plan they gave me last year. Looking at the answer options, option A. Well, milk is actually high in phosphate, so this was good for you. So this is good if it is tolerated. Option B. Small meals spaced out throughout the day is also beneficial. However, in option C, he is probably taking a phosphate binding antacid such as aluminum hydroxide. This may actually lower his phosphate level. In D, the diet plan, if followed, should be beneficial. Making the final and correct answer option here, C. Question number two. You are checking lab values for your patient that has sustained 55% burns from a motor vehicle accident. You might expect which electrolyte imbalance? A. Hypercalcemia B. Hypophosphatemia C. Hypernatremia or D. Hypermagnesia In option A, burn patients are not at risk for hypercalcemia. In option B, there are many known cases of hypophosphatemia included in stress responses and extensive burns. In option C, burn patients are not at risk for hypernatremia. And option D, burn patients are not at an increased risk for developing increased blood magnesium levels. Making the final and correct answer option here, B. All right guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and all of the videos that we created on fluid and electrolytes. We definitely had a lot of fun creating the videos for you and I really hope that it helps you when you're in your class trying to understand your professor or when you're taking your exam, or when you're working as a nurse. And you know, it can be so much to try to remember everything. So I really hope that it helps you out on your nursing journey. If it has helped you at all, please post a comment and give the video a thumbs up if you would like to see 
more videos like this. Also, please let me know what topics you're interested in and we always try to accommodate videos for you guys. So, I cannot wait to see you next week with another topic. I love you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.